so I'm going to invite uh, Victor Ilianes uh, to give us the next presentation. Uh, Victor is a medical doctor, he's an internal medicine specialist, um, which I think means everything but dermatology <laughs> and <laughs> skin <laughs> and hair loss. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he splits his time between uh, clinical practice as well as being a medical referent at MSF Operational uh, Center Barcelona Athens in Barcelona, uh, where he works al on NCDs and other issues as well. So go ahead, Victor. Okay, thank you. Ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, ten minutes. <laughs> Hi, thank you very much. Um, uh, well, I'm, I'm here basically on behalf. Do you have the slides as well? Yes, I do, actually. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry, that was my job. Sorry. No, no, no. Actually, I'll move this over here. Yeah. Is there a cappella that it would be nicer yeah. to? Yeah. Well, uh, well, first of all, um, thank you. <laughs> but uh, I'm here basically on behalf of uh, Gazan Aziz. He is our program uh, manager of the health surveillance program in Middle East. And he was supposed to be here, but for more administrative slash immigration issues, he couldn't uh, attend. So um, I will be um, doing this presentation. I'm sorry, this is passing around. Uh, what we wanted to share with you is a very practical uh, experience of the appliance of uh, a mobile data collection tool for surveys in a setting where we uh, consider it difficult to obtain information uh, in MSF and how this could have some space for NCD monitoring eventually. Uh, thank you. Well, uh, the need comes, uh, has been stressed uh, during the whole presentations, but I will just use this completely non-standard uh, 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 word of difficult setting that for us basically means not only a place that we don't know uh, or we don't have really local sources of information because this is probably almost everywhere, it's also um, where, uh, where we have problems of access or the conflict might imply that uh, movements of population make the situation change quite quickly. So uh, in these settings, we of course need information to start with, but uh, we probably need some information during the project development and eventually, which is something that we, we will all like, is to have some type of measure of the impact of the interventions that we're having. In the Middle East, um, the health surveillance program was developed that basically implies surveys that are done in a repeated manner to try to have so at least a basal assessment of some conditions and then to have a follow-up in the same population, target population that we're uh, looking at. So um, for this tool in particular, surveys were done and as you see, uh, there was an electronic uh, device in the middle. So this is part of what I wanted to show you about. Sorry about that. Basically, um, the software, what it allowed is, a, is a, um, a flow of information from the tablet itself, sorry, uh, to um, as soon as it got on online, the database was automatically up, uh, uploaded. So, uh, the <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't know how to take that out actually. The, um, the analysis could be done almost real time. So uh, all the stakeholders could have uh, the information very available and quite quick as soon as the survey was collected. So basically from these four stages of uh, preparation, survey collection, and encoding of data and analysis, at least we uh, start taking out one, which is the encoding because this is directly uploaded to from the tablet. The survey collection, there was a pilot done in Lebanon in 2014 and, and uh, what they referred is that uh, for very large surveys where there are a lot of information compared to a paper base, they were taking like a third of the time because uh, it's very, it's very user friendly, the, the application. The analysis is, qui is quick because it's, it's immediately uploaded for everybody. And the teams also refer that the training was quite easy also because it's a very structured uh, um, uh, interview. So for the moment, five uh, interviews have, uh, five uh, surveys have been done. Only one of them has a follow-up <coughs> in, uh, in Iraq. Uh, and they have been in different settings and for different populations. Some of them have been directed for uh, refugee population, some for IDP population, and some for general population. Mm -hmm. Do we have a space for NCD monitoring in this setting? Well, basically, uh, the initial assessment of prevalence has been uh, discussed here a bit. Of course, it might imply some, some things in the operational side as soon as we know the population. Healthcare access is a very important one for us, uh, also the, for the initial assessment, but also for the follow-up, especially if we are intending to have uh, an impact on that. Population practices and perception could be interesting to know as much as a quantitative tool can give us. And event eventually we can in include uh, some potential outcome indicators like the frequency of hospital consultation for asthma attacks 
or their awareness or education for a community health education program. So I wanted just to show you uh, the survey that has been done of the five, the, the one that had an NCD component inside. That was the last one that we did in, in July. Yeah. It was done in the south of Syria in an yeah. area that is difficult for us, partly because we don't have access with expatriates to the area. So this is one of the settings that we call this remote control settings. Uh, it's uh, in the zone of Dara, which is a um, which is a, a mixed uh, uh, controlled area, so we don't have access to the whole area. But in East Dara, the survey was uh, done for the population that was there. Basically, uh, sorry, the clustering, the, the, the area was separated in three groups and 26 clusters were uh, identified. And this was the time frame for the survey itself. The training was quite quick. And because of this characteristic of the tool, it could be actually done by Skype, which was very uh, comfortable for the situation that they had. The collection was uh, done in five days. They could only collect 18 of the 26 clusters because of the of security issues. But still, that meant uh, around 1,000 uh, households and 4,200 uh, individuals. And this is a relatively large survey with a lot of items and information, um, from food security, essential items, utilities, to more things related to access to healthcare. And, and in this one, besides many other things, uh, some questions regarding self-reported uh, diseases were, were done regarding hypertension, diabetic, asthma, asthma-like actually because uh, the diagnosis is a bit more tricky. The, um, then in each one of these uh, sub-items regarding access to healthcare or control of the diabetes or the hypertensive was, uh, was asked and also in the case of asthma for example how many asthma attacks they had in the last 12 months etc. So uh, it, was, uh, it, it was quite a volume of information and it was easily avail available for all. So relatively quickly, as soon as this was done the, by the end of July, the, all the stakeholders that were interested had this information. This is this 15% of the total population has some chronic illness as self-reported. 30, 35% of those are hypertensive, 20% so diabetic. We could get a glimpse of what type, type of treatment they're receiving or needed. So for us, it was very interesting to know the amount of insulin uh, requirements of the zone, of the area we could get a glimpse of how well uh, or how is the control of the diabetes, for example, how many uh, blood sugars in the last 30 days or how many visits in the last m a year to the doctor. And this outcome indicators like the one for asthma that we were talking about, the, the uh, visits to the hospital for, for an asthma attack. So what was the response with this information? Well, it's a little bit soon to, to know, but what, what, what we can tell you about is that the fact that it was easily accessible to everybody and, uh, uh, and this survey, what the first thing that has brought to discussion in the, in the area is that our intervention was very focused on the hospital and we might need to get a better access to um, particular vulnerable groups like these insulin uh, requiring patients that might need uh, some type of primary health care uh, uh, response. Data, of course, as you all know, is super important for us for advocacy, so this information is supposed to, to go. And we, I hope that we have the luxury to have uh, uh, some site of, uh, of uh, impact of uh, Did I during the, the next uh, assessment. The next assessment is planning six to nine months. And, uh, and the idea is that trying to filling up the gaps, the, the next plan for the next months is going to be developed, implemented. And we hope that in the next assessment, we have some type of information that, that help us uh, to know if we are doing something. Advantages. Basically, this is from the field. The collection speed, as we were saying, was pretty, uh, pretty uh, very fast. The encoding was completely non-existent, and that implies less mistakes, less human resources, eventually. The analysis is quite simplified and accessible to all the stakeholders. And, and since um, the, the data storage is, is standard, they, uh, they, uh, we actually can compare uh, different settings eventually if we can, if we want. The cost was not uh, analyzed. But um, in general, you, you, even though some part of the technical side will cost more, you uh, eliminate human resources for the encoding and everything. So at least the feeling from the field was that the cost was at least similar <coughs> to a regular survey. And it provides new logistical challenges, even though the field uh, said it wasn't the biggest uh, issue in this particular Middle East setting, that probably is not something general vital to, to all the other places. So, well, thanks for the attention after lunch. Eh? <laughs> Thank you, Victor. Uh, any clarification questions for Victor? There's one up there, but you're going to have to wait for a microphone. Which one? Uh, 
Um, try again. Sigiria Ibisha Perone, I'm from the International Committee of the Red Cross, the ICRC. So just one question, it's about uh, data protection, meaning you had online data, how can we guarantee the data protection and confidentiality of patient data, because this is a big uh, issue. Very good question. Victor, can you come here to answer so the microphone? Well, I hope I'm not mistaken, so since I'm not completely into it. I understand that all the data was anonymized, anonym, anonymized, anonymized. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the tool itself it guarantees uh, certain degrees of data protection. It's not uh, uh, the, the idea was to use aggregated data, so basically we're not having an electronic medical record of the, of the people. Uh, so I understand that it's not a, a big uh, issue here. Of course, this web base is not accessible to everybody, on, on only to the stakeholders that is uh, that were interested in the in the data. Hmm? Just one more clarification question. So, can we move the microphone? Yeah. To where we are. Please introduce yourself. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> um, I'm Ula from the Syria Public Health Network. Um, I spoke to the makers of the Tama platform, and actually the. Uh, platform does comply with EU protection data regulations and also US ones, which is a really positive thing about the app. Um, and my question to you is, this app is capable of doing longitudinal data for individual patients, as well as just as a surveillance tool. And I wondered if you had any experience of using that. Well, we don't. We don't. I'm, uh, I'm afraid that I, I cannot answer more than that. I, I don't know uh, more information about longitudinal, longitudinal data. I'm afraid that we don't have any experience using it. So maybe that's it. <coughs> Thanks, Victor. I have one quick question. Yep. How long does the questionnaire take <laughs> for, for a household? Because uh, clearly you showed a lot, a lot of, of questions. questions to me. Well, actually, yes. Uh, I can do a... I am trying to remember exactly the number that they told me about the, the um, but they were talking about around 85 households per day, 10 teams. Uh, no, it has to be more. Well, it is, it's 90, it's a thousand household in five days time. So uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure how, what to tell you, but we can do the math. Uh, but, uh, but the fact is that what they, they relate is that the fact that you, uh, ended up you put age group of the of the patient for example and that immediately separated the the branch of questions sure. that you are going to use and uh, some questions regarding income and stuff like this was only done for one of the households so the the, the volume of information was uh, different for for all the interviewers okay.